coach David Carl. David, practice day yesterday. What was your message to the team? Uh, to continue to improve. Um, drills we did, I thought the tempo was very good. Did a little special teams work, but uh, a little bit of our puck management, uh, some of those decisions, and uh, some improvement. I thought practice was good, and obviously another big test here against Switzerland. A really big test. You look at Switzerland yesterday, they played Slovakia really tough. They played fast. When you look at this Swiss team, what do you see? Uh, they're battle tests. They've, they've played Canada, Sweden, and Slovakia now, and um, all games very close, outplayed all three teams at different moments, certainly outshot uh, the Slovaks heavily yesterday, ran into a very good goaltender um, in Gajan, and um, you know, our job is to play fast, play to our identity early, and uh, try and make them as uncomfortable as we can. Speaking of identity, when I look at your Denver teams, I think of teams that are smart, that play strong culture hockey. Uh, in a short tournament like this, what sort of intangibles are important to conjure up? Um, I think it's playing for the team uh, first and foremost and obviously there's no greater honor than, than to represent your country at this event so that, that part's easy and then it's um, just getting them all to, to kind of get on the same page with how we want to play with and without the puck. All the best today versus the Swiss. Thanks David. Great, thank you. Thanks John and you can see in goal for Team Switzerland Lauren Gruner. He gets a start today. He did not play in yesterday's game. It was Alessio Beglieri, there's David Carl, Team USA head coach on the other bench, Marcel Yenny. And uh, this is his first go round with the World Junior Program. His assistant, Tommy Abilene, former NHL player. We told you already in the goal for Team USA, it's Jacob Fowler. So uh, the Goche line on the ice for Team USA. It'll be Goche and Tybell on the draw. Dave, ready to go, game two. 5-10 goaltender in there for the Swiss. Look for the U.S. to establish a very heavy net front presence and we'll continue to watch the dumping versus grabbing the line off the rush offense, something that David Carl talked to us a little bit earlier. And the theme being, EJ, he doesn't want to take the sticks out of the players' hands. And with highly gifted offensive players, you want them to make plays. You have to anticipate they're going to make plays. He also wants them to understand that concept of when to hold them, when to fold them, approaching the line. Off the draw. Mueller comes the other way. Now over the blue line, shot towards the net. Knocked out. Team USA looking to get it out. Mueller all over that, 17 in red. Off to a fast start. Puck gets banged into the zone. Ruger will play it behind his net. Leaves it for Dionisio. Good story there. Born in Newark, New Jersey, Rodwin Dionisio. Only spent five months there, Dave, and then grew up in Switzerland. Plays over in the OHL now for Saginaw. He'll be somebody that will get a lot of ice time today. Here comes Nazar. Puck bounces quickly there. Brindley off the stick. And the Swiss will come the other way. Shipped in by Julian Rod. Puck bounces around. Fortescue throws it ahead. Here comes Isaac Howard down to pick it up. Puck comes up high. Casey walking in. Casey fires. Stopped by Gruden. It's early on. U.S. with a good offensive chance off a chip in. Lane Hudson, we talked about him the other night. I really think the most underrated part of his game is how well he defends. Good defensive stick. Uses his edges really well. And when he invests and gets on his edges, he's really hard to move. The U.S. off this chip in. Howard first to the puck, half ball battle. They were above the puck to win it, and then it gets back to Casey for a shot. Real good offense. Quick shot, or shot attempt there by Leonard. He fanned on that one. Team USA working it in the offensive zone. Shot to the side of the net, and a goal! It's Will Smith! And a quick goal for the Americans. They take the early lead. Possession, 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 a huge theme for Team USA. Good, clean one draw. Now they get the puck move. It gets across the Royal Road to get the Swiss defense to spread out. Now look what the Swiss are doing. They're starting to run around. They're staying between the dock, but there's not identified coverage that's real good. So there's bodies in spots, but there's nobody in stick length of Smith who is out on the back door wide and gets the pass. So. One thing that the U.S. talked about, and Brent Larson talked to me about it earlier today, get the Swiss moving around so that the coverage comes apart a little bit. Expand, contract, 
expand, contract. They get the Swiss moving around, and Smith finds an opening. So Smith deposits it into the cage. Nice pass from Zev Bouillon. And Team USA out to the early 1-0 lead. Much different than in game one where we played scoreless for half the game. Bruder could not come up with that one. As the Boston College Eagle, Will Smith gets his first goal of the tournament. If you're thinking upset, that's a save you need to have early because you knew the U.S. was going to come out on fire. Here comes Timo Meyer, walks in with a shot, he misses the net. Team USA plays it into the neutral zone. Long pass across, they're on the attack again. Puck goes behind the net. Comes back and Meyer comes the other way, Simo Meyer. Two Meyers on the team for Sweden. Endo Meyer, 25, Simo Meyer, 27. Here comes Perot now. Walks towards the net, leaves it for Leonard, but they misconnect. Indirect off the wall. Good back check by Gabe Perot. Puck comes all the way down. Miles Muller tries to attack, can't do it. Dionisio is there for the Swiss. Excellent stick by Leonard. Good tight gap, used his length, killed a play early. Something the U.S. is really focused on on the defensive side is tighter gaps, better on the track backs, and killing some plays outside the offense or outside the defensive blue line. Mugli is going to chase back for the Swiss. Behind his own net, Leon Mugli. Mugli's a kid whose name you might hear at the NHL draft this summer. He has really played his way into a nice spot somewhere in the middle of the draft. Really, really skilled kid. Played out front, and it goes in! Quick play at the net! So Team USA off and running in this one. The second goal, it looks like it was Snuggerud, but we'll take another look. That was quick, Dave. Uh, Snuggerud's just got that long stick. He's got a way of making a lot happen. Here we go again. First in on the forecheck. They win a battle, seal the wall here, and then the passing goes to work, and Snuggerud, with a good stick, just goes to the net. He moves the puck, doesn't admire it, gets himself towards the front of the net. He and Gauthier, both hard to the front of the net, two big bodies. And a little bit of a leaker that the Swiss would want back. But the bottom line is the U.S. has scored two goals of two pucks below the goal line where they were first on it and were able to make a secondary play off the original capture. So Jimmy Snuggerud with his second goal of the tournament. And it's a rough start for Lauren Bruder in goal for the Swiss. And you mentioned it, Dave. When you're looking, uh, when you're one of these teams that's looking to upset, the one ing ingredient that you desperately need is good goaltending. And it's been a little shaky to start. I was about to say, you, you need to have belief. And when you're down 2 nothing, four minutes into a game, your belief evaporates really quickly. And the Swiss played yesterday. Team USA had the day off, and I think that's something as the tournament goes on, that extra rest is helpful. Was it John Tortorella? Who should say rest is a weapon? Well, it's certainly been a weapon in the first five, a little less than five minutes of period number one as Team USA has come out to grab the quick 2-0 lead on the goals by Smith and Snuggeroo. Now remember, the Swiss played yesterday. They played the slow box. They played great they did. in that game. They, they lost 3-0. It was two empty netters. So, I mean, they were terrific in yesterday's game against the slow box. And it looks like they're still kind of in the mindset there. Shot goes wide by Timo Rieni. Timo is the son of Marcel, who is the head coach. So father and son connection there. There's a puck in front of the net. I thought we weren't supposed to have parent coaches in Utah. <laughs> You want to open that can of worms or should we leave that one alone? Hey, this is, I'm staying out of that one. There's a chance in front just beneath the skates of Matteo Reinhardt. He had a chance there on a quick pass. Team USA the other way, and we get a whistle and an offside. The Swiss will get their opportunities as this game goes on. There's no question. Now they've just got to climb out of a giant hole that they dug themselves in. But really nice play here by Jenny as he comes through and gets himself an opportunity. And if you're the Swiss now, yeah, you need to stick with your game plan. You need to 
stick with the mindset that you had coming out of yesterday's game, which was stay in attack mode and, and get pucks in the net. But obviously they're playing a little bit of a different caliber offensive team in the U.S. that can really control pucks. So that one is dumped in, and it will be an icing. Puck will come all the way back. That's one of those little mistakes in a game. You need one more stride to get to center red, and uh, chipped it in a little bit early. Puck comes all the way back. The in-the-neighborhood play in international play, I've noticed, is not there. <laughs> Team USA wins the draw. Good forechecking pressure there by Tybal. That comes up the wall. Americans come the other way on the rush. Pass across. Stopping up there was Danny Nelson. He lost. This come the other way, but good defense by the Americans at the blue line. See, there's two opportunities right there where you probably should get a puck in. Like, that'll be a little bit of a video between periods. Hey, tight gap, not a lot of speed, not a lot of space. Let's move this down the wall. Here's Danny Nelson. Throws it back down low. Puck comes up the wall and cleared out all the way. That'll be a little short. Mortis team was able to move that puck up the wall. Puck comes through the middle. Here's a quick shot by Bunsley, Timo Bunsley with a chance. Long pass ahead, Team USA on a break. There's a shot just fired wide by Perot. Gave Perot with an opportunity. Turner over at the blue line. Now the Swiss get it back. Regrouping back in their end. Christie to Dionisio. Up the wall, chipped in. Behind the net. Team USA looking to gain possession, they do. Smith ahead to Perot. He'll chase it. Dionisio there. They battle along the wall. Puck comes to the middle. Swiss escaped his own. Chesley stepped up though for Team USA. Here's Leonard now. Leonard walking in to the backhand, sweeping through. Couldn't get it. Really couldn't get a shot there. Here's another turnover in front. Team USA on the attack. Hudson. Puck knocked off his stick. He battles to get it back. They keep it in. Team USA keeping it in the zone. The Swiss are able to come back and regain possession. Dionisio throws it back to Christie. <laughs> Perot had one last gasp of breath in him. And he figured, let's toe drag out of this thing. I got four behind me in case I lose it. Here's the turnover. The Americans are on the attack again. And a chance to the net. Howard couldn't handle it. The Swiss in transition now, trying to make a move up the ice. Brindley back for the Americans, winds it around. Kept in at the point, shot through traffic, stopped by Fowler, and he'll hold on. So Team USA off and running here, they lead it, two nothing. USA Hockey is teaching more than just a game. We're teaching kids about... Teamwork. Confidence. Fitness. Fun. Because every kid deserves a chance to play, love, and excel. Visit USAHockey.com to learn more about the great youth hockey opportunities available for your child. Because dreaming big is one thing. Getting the right start is everything. Your vehicle takes a beating from the environment. Keep your vehicle looking better than new with Cerakote's Rapid Ceramic Paint Sealant. Now you can seal and protect your paint with unbelievable gloss, shine, and slickness in less than 30 minutes. Look at the difference with Cerakote's true hydrophobic ceramic technology. The level of gloss and slickness is unbelievable. Everything just slides right off. Simply spray it on and lightly buff it with the included microfiber towels. Buy any of Cerakote's number one selling ceramic products for under $20 at these leading retailers today. You know, looking at the recap on Huddle Instat this morning, and you talked a lot about the USA missing the net, talked to David Carl about it this morning, and you take a look at the shot chart for the U.S., the black dots are shots on goal, the red dots are goals, all those X's are shots that either missed the net or were blocked. The U.S. had about eight shots blocked in the game. They blocked a ton themselves, but to your point, E.J., earlier on, accuracy is a key component that the U.S. is discussing. Off the draw, quick shot by Mugley, stopped by Fowler. And, you know, you mentioned Leon Mugley a little bit earlier, but he is a, a draft eligible for 2024. 
at 17 years old. He's already played in this highest league in Switzerland. Played 25 games there, nine points. Not bad. And there's, you see, Gavin Brindley's parents. Maybe they're waving to their son. <laughs> or they know they're on TV, one or the other. Exactly. Brindley was terrific in game one against Norway. Here come the Americans on the rush. Snuggled with a shot. And Gruder's able to grab that one. Snugger with a good launch to the net. It goes another one of those players on the U.S. team that just love to shoot the puck is get a real good look at Gavin Brindley sitting on the bench. Real good start for him this in this tournament. Again. And there's nothing better <laughs> than watching the folks come out. I'll tell you what, oh, when you're a hockey that. parent and ain't you, you're a hockey parent straight through. And that is one of the great parts of the game is getting mom, dad, or stepmom, stepdad to come on out and watch you play at every level. He's a teammate of Adam Fantilli's at Michigan, as you well know, Dave, and they had a great moment at the draft. Here's a chance to the front. Snuggaroo with a shot. Stopped by Gruner. Oh, a great chance for Snuggaroo, and he just looks up to the sky. Oh, Snuggaroo and Adam, too. Good little chip off ice and passed it on, and Snuggaroo coming in. Was looking to go off the back knee of the goaltender. Is that, see, when the goaltender pushes from his right to his left, he exposed a little bit of a hole off the back push leg, and Stuggeroo went right after it, and a great recovery. And just like that, another goal for Team USA, and Stuggeroo may make good on the second opportunity. If, it, if indeed it is his goal, that would be his second of the game. And here he is chasing to the net, and he just wires it top corner, then puts it in the holster. Secondary win by the United States on the faceoff. A scramble off the original draw, and Stuggerud comes charging through. When you are highly organized on faceoffs, you see that puck deflected as it was on its way to the net, which made life a whole lot harder for Gruder. But off the faceoff, it's a scramble behind, and like he was shot out of a can, and Stuggerud grabbed it once he got an open space. Got a puck towards the front of the net. When you shoot, good things happen off the deflection. So Snuggerud with his second of the game. And Team USA out to a 3-0 lead over the Swiss. These two teams have played, these countries have played 25 times coming into this tournament. The U.S. has won 23 and tied twice. The Swiss have never beaten Team USA at the World Juniors. Listen, the Germans had never beaten the Finns either. That's true. But they weren't trailing 3-0. That's a good point. In the first nine minutes. Yeah, that's fair. So we'll see how things go. It's going to be uh, plenty of time remaining. Fowler plays that one ahead. But certainly, this is the start Team USA would want, Dave. Absolutely. Obviously. Yeah, David Carl talked about their first two shifts in uh, game one were really good. Then it got a little sideways on them. And in the third period, he felt like they were the team that they could be with where how they executed how they performed he really wanted not only a good start but he wanted that start to continue and manifest itself into something special and it certainly has through nine minutes chance of the net nice from Hoy there a shot and a goal what a play by Gregory Weber right shot coming down the left side with a pretty play Beats Fowler, and the Swiss are on the board. It's 3-1. Swiss with a good breakout pass here. They attack the line. They grab it with possession. He could have carried a box of eggs with him and not broken them with how easily he got to the middle of the ice and then into the hard area for that shot. Fowler was going towards his left, got dragged over just a little bit, and couldn't get the stick down in the paddle down position before that shot came in. That was a really good offensive play by Weaver, but that was a little soft in the coverage by the U.S. defense. It looked like he might have healed that shot. Like, he just kind of, like, went off his stick and kind of rolled off his stick and then slid through the pads on a fool fouler. You know, one of, the, one of the things with goaltenders is, is getting into the paddle down on shots in tight. And you make a decision. You want to go with your paddle along the ice, or your blade along the ice. You want to go paddle down and make the save that way. Sometimes you get caught right in the middle of it, and that's what happened with Fowler. So Bruder will grab that one. We'll take one more look at this goal. 
Well, there's a recover. really good move on Casey's. He got Casey's toe caps the wrong way. She's Speller's getting into the, the paddle down position to try to take away the low ice, and he's really, really good at that. That's not the typical goal you expect Fowler to give up because that paddle down and ceiling low is something that he does extremely well. So the Swiss on the board. They did play very well yesterday against Slovakia. As you pointed out earlier, it was basically a one nothing game. That ended up with two empty netters. They were the better of the two teams, didn't go their way. So far in this one though, Team USA has come out fast and uh, have the early cushion here. But as I say, we got about 50 minutes of hockey left here. Now remember yesterday we were talking about goaltenders in their first game, they want to get touches early. Like Fowler hadn't touched the puck very much until that shot happened. Yeah. Augustine first really good chance. Had a couple of couple of touches of the puck before the first grade A happened. That was the first legit grade A for the Swiss. And like I said, Fowler has been a little cold. He hadn't really touched the puck very much, and that's a fact. Puck comes all the way down. Get a nice. So can we make the case that the Swiss have doubled their offensive output in the tournament with that goal? And well, that is their first goal of the, the tournament. Goal. After getting blanked yesterday by Adam Guyan and the Slovakians. Uh, the funniest comment from this morning was talking with Brett Larson from St. Cloud State University. They are the same conference as the University of Minnesota Duluth, and that's where Guyan is going. And <laughs> among a couple of the coaches, they were joking about Guyan. Could you imagine we have to face this guy four times next year? He has been excellent for Slovakia in World Junior play last year. He had Canada in overtime. And gave them a big time scare. And he was the, I believe he was the he was the goalie of the tournament last year. I think you're right. And he's uh, started off with a strong play thus far this year. The Slovaks have won their first two games. They will play Team USA on the 31st. There's a quick shot by Frank Mazar and stopped by Bruder. Puck in front. Kind of bounces around. Swiss move it up to the wing. Tybo, long cross ice pass. To him with a nice defensive play there. Really good pass. That's good, hard, solid engagement. Tight gap, stick in. Nice play. Azar tried to pass it through. Knocked out into center ice. Linzel. And now Nazar attacking the net. Fire. Blocker stop. Snuggaroos battling for the corner. Puck comes loose, comes to Boonsley, throws it up. The U.S. takes control in their own end. Zell under fire there. Good forechecking pressure from Reinhardt. Pretty good post play by Renzel, wasn't it? There's a chance in the front of the net. Not wide. Yeah, it was a little bit dicey near the net. Kept his cool, stayed on his edges, protected the puck, got wide. Chance to the side. Snuggerud looking for his third. He's got the puck behind the net. It comes out front. The Swiss will come away with it. Yeah, to center, close to center. But to your point, the neighborhood play does not exist. Because <laughs> that was closer than the one on Team USA, but Julian Rod just didn't get it all the way over. USA just buzz it, create turnovers high in the offensive zone. We, we discussed in game one the big rink and a lot of teams now play two up on the four check with a high F3 and the international play with the wider rink. It's more of a one two. And the U.S. has done a really nice job with their two high forwards picking off passes. They've also done a great job extending plays on loose pucks by the blue line with their speed. There's the Americans again with a shot and another goal. And it's Snuggerud again. Throw your hats. A hat trick in the first 13 minutes of game number two. Wow. Almost the same play that he scored on before. He's the off wing on the wall. It's a scramble. Great job. Great job by Goche. To tie up his man off the face off and then Stugger who just leads into this thing. And that was a laser beam off the stick of Stuggerud, who, like I said before, at the NCAA level, scores much in the same way that Brock Besser did when he played at the University of North Dakota. So Lauren Bruder will head to the bench, 
and he will be replaced by Iwan Yue. And that last name, if it sounds familiar, it should because he is the son of Cristobal Yue, who played in the NHL for many, many years, won a Stanley Cup with the Blackhawks in 2010, released recently elected to the IIHF Hall of Fame in 2023. So young Yuan Yue will come on here. He plays in the Western Hockey League for the Regina Pats. And he walks into a tough spot, down four to one here. A little more than halfway through period number one. Puck goes to the corner. Finley there. Kicks around on the wall. Americans look to get it out. Turnover in front, good chance! Oh, it just goes off to the side of the post. Great opportunity by Raver. Number six in red. Looked like the old Peter Forsberg play where he tried to use that offhand and just try to tuck it in, but he ran out of real estate. You know who used to be really good at that too is Tony Granato. Yeah. Reber, he didn't run out of real estate, he ran out of arm. <laughs> he just couldn't get all the way over there. A little bit of a sloppy play there led to that great chance. Definitely a different look here in game two for Team USA. There's a shot through traffic, blocked down. There was no goals in the first 30 minutes in the game against Norway, Dave, and here we have five. Four scored by Team USA in the first 14 minutes. Timo Meyer with it now for the Swiss. Fires it towards the net, stopped by Fowler. Kicks out in front, Perot gets the American started again. Here's Leonard. Leonard to the blue line. Throws it all the way across. He was looking for Smith, couldn't find him. Yenny the other way. Timo Yenny kind of loses the puck in his feet. Americans come the other way. Leonard on the move. Leonard, he's knocked down behind the net. Could be a penalty, and there will be a tripping call coming up. So Team USA will head to the power play when we come back. They lead it 4-1. Sixty seconds to draw the perfect gift. What's it gonna be? A bottle of Don Julio, 1942, delivered. Delivered with Drizzly. Gifting without the guessing. Drizzly. What's it gonna be? The Pepsi Zero Sugar NHL Goalie Challenge is free and easy to play. Every week, all season long, pick three teams and earn points based on teams' goalie performances. You could win NHL game tickets and other great prizes. Play at NHL.com/PepsiGoalieChallenge. Anyone who's ever sold a home will tell you it's really hard. And it's one of the biggest financial decisions you'll ever make. That's why who you work with matters. Together with Homelight, we take care of every detail, from staging to showing to negotiating to closing. We've helped thousands of people sell faster and for a better price. So Team USA goes to the power play with the three goal lead here in period number one. Tripping penalty to Austin Koff. And you can see there he gets the stick in the feet of Ryan Leonard. So the Americans quickly back to the attack. Up high, Hudson. Hudson looking, they had two power play goals against Norway in game one. Did give up a shorthanded goal. There's a shot by Howard, rifles that one just over the crossbar. Walking in now, pass behind the net. They try to throw it all the way through, goes to Hudson. Gauthier, he fires, loved down by UA. Talking to Brent Larson this morning, who handles the power play, he said to me that a lot of what the power play did in game number one looks very close to how they designed their units. And he really liked the fact that they were able to execute the structure as quickly as they have. So Goche on the draw. Against Grady. U.S. gains possession. Here's Hudson. Pulls up. Back to Goche. Takes a look. Hudson up high. Goche looks. This shot is deflected up in the air. Keeps alive, but looks like a hand pass there. We'll get a whistle. 
will get a face off out of the zone. So you got Gauthier, who's a left handed shot on that right side. You got Snuggerud, who's a right who's a right handed shot on the left side. So you've got the alternate flanks there. Then you got a great bumper presence in the middle. And you saw Gauthier try to set up that same play that he did the other night where he threw a little pass into the slot, looking off to the flank and then drilling it right into the bumper. So Jimmy Snuggler with three goals already in period number one. Four goals in the tournament. He loves the World Juniors. He had 13 points in the tournament last year. Five goals. So off to a great start here. There's a chance by Perot, blocking away by UA. Puck now deflecting into the neutral zone, and Will Smith will chase it back. Americans gaining the zone. 35 seconds left in the power play. There's a shot by Smith. Deflected up into the netting. Smith had the first goal in the game. Snug with the last three, Dave. U.S. goes to work, utilizing the open space. Oh, off the pipe. Flings a crossbar. Like, this is a good look by Smith. See, quick, the quick look off to get the sticks out of the lane. And then he's got a pretty clean lane to the net. And he didn't miss by much. Team USA now. 22 seconds left on the power play. Working behind the net. Taking a look. Throw it all the way through to Casey. Comes back. Here's Smith with pass in front. Stopped by UA. Really good opportunity there. Dangerous play there by Mueller, but he's able to control it and get it all the way out. He chases it down. Bumps the American behind the net. Brindley and now Brindley to center. Long pass ahead, deflected up and over the glass. So Team USA flying out of the gates in this one. They lead it 4-1 over the Swiss. How can your base layer help you stay active? Make it the only base layer with invisible medical grade knee support. Add 90 feet of high strength cables and make them fully adjustable to give you complete control. Proven to help you overcome injuries, eliminate pain, and regain the confidence to get back out there. So you can do more of this, and this, and this. People call them many things. Yeah, magic pants. We call it supportive apparel. Learn more at stoco.com. Get the very latest in Team USA and USA Hockey apparel at ShopUSAHockey.com. There's something for all ages from jerseys, hoodies, T-shirts, novelties, and more. Don't delay. Head to USA Hockey. ShopUSAHockey.com. Now, there you go. There's Iwan Ue. He has come on in relief of Lauren Bruder, who allowed four goals. And now UA comes on, the son of NHLer Cristobal UA. And here are the Swiss down the right side. Lane Hudson, good work there along the wall. Dionisio keeps it in, stops up. He comes down the wall, driving towards the net on the backhand. Loses it in the feet, throws it out, goes all the way back the other way. The Swiss will have to retreat. A couple of messages I'm sure going through the U.S. bench right now to be going through between periods, and that is winning habits, puck management, do not do anything that will allow the Swiss to easily get back in the game along those lines. And there was, as you say that, Simon Meyer was in a good spot, but just couldn't handle the pass. He was wide open. Make sure your coverage is good. Just defend with your sticks down. Nothing high risk, no Harlem Globetrotters kind of thing. Like, manage the puck smartly and play for the next goal, like in 0-0. Like, that, like, that's how you build a winning culture, especially when you have a lead. Here's Snuggerud again. He's already got three today. Can't blink when he's got the puck on his stick. And he's got it again. 
fires one wide. Kept in by the Americans, now skips off the stick. And Bouillon will have to regroup at center. To Gauthier, to Bouillon, driving in, back pass, and deflects off Mugli into the net. Everything is going right for Team USA in period number one, and it's 5-1. I can swear he mouthed the words, we'll take it. <laughs> Great reaction. It's good pass. And look what he does. He just drives right through the Swiss defense after he makes the play. Good little thing here for young defensemen. You make your pass wide, and then you keep driving the net. Don't admire your play. Like, you want to go for a goal, go where the goals are. And he splits the D, and in trying to make a pass, throws it off Bugley skates and into the back of the net. But to me, the play that Booyah makes by moving the puck wide and then just getting on his horse and driving downtown gets him the goal. So Zev Booyah with his first of the tournament. And the Americans have opened up the big 5-1 lead here as period number one starts to wind down. There's a shot by, stopped by Fowler in front. Here comes Moore. Nazer spins back. Tries to skip through traffic. Swiss were able to get it to center. Minute left now in first period action. Chance through the crease, comes all the way up high to Moore. Moore walks in, his shot knocked down in front. They battle along the wall. Buck skips up. Finally, Shield takes it. Theory Shields. We're behind the net. Americans regroup. Turnover. Puck knocked down, and Perot is there in good defensive position. Long pass ahead. They tried to squeeze it through to Leonard. Couldn't do it. Here's Perot now. Spinning away. Takes a hit from Dionisio. Puck backhanded up the wall. Americans with it again. You know, the puck bouncing around a lot. David Carl mentioned to us in our pregame call that talked about this firm ice here, and the puck bounces quite a bit. And we've seen some of that. And it certainly has not bounced for the Swiss. It's bouncing really good for Jimmy Snuggerud. Three goals in the first period, a hat trick. Team USA with five in total. And they go to the locker room with a very commanding 5-1 lead over Team Switzerland. Good New York hosts the 2024 IIHF Women's World Championship. Only through January the 1st, fans can purchase a special U.S. preliminary round ticket package, and all session ticket packages are also on sale. Visit the 2024.womensworld.hockey for more information. That's going to be a great event up there in Utica, and I know they've been doing some really good stuff in Utica with uh, the different hockey programs up there. And uh, certainly uh, Utica College. Got shout out to my friend's son, John Gutt, plays up there at Utica College. So Stan, if you're watching, you'll be happy we get you into the broadcast here. Little known fact, a couple of scenes from Slapshot were actually filmed at the Utica Memorial. There you go. Memorial. Yep. And when I think of Slapshot, I think of my guy Bruce Boudreaux, our colleague here at NHL Network, and he's over at the Spangler Cup in Davos coaching Team Canada. They got off to a, uh, a win in their first game behind a shutout from Aaron Dell, former NHL goaltender. Former University of North Dakota goaltender. There you go. Meanwhile, <laughs> period number two is underway. Here's McGrady with a shot. Stopped by UA. Rector McGrady, he wasn't happy with his performance in game number one, and he's certainly been a story here in game number two being more of a factor. He was a factor in the first period. It's interesting because you didn't call his name a ton. He played a real quiet four and a half minutes, a real effective four and a half minutes, and came away with a couple of points. His second game back suffered a pretty nasty injury. Michigan at Penn State in uh, mid-November was uncertainty as to whether he was going to be able to get back. But here he is, and another nice opportunity, Dave. Big man, smooth skater. Love how he got the hands extended to get the puck around the defenseman. Used the D as a little bit of a screen. 
and gets the puck to the front of the net. Had an assist in period number one. Nice solid period as he continues to work back from injury. Got to meet his parents, Jimmy and Cindy, at the Prospects game last year. Couldn't have been nicer, his sister Molly. He's a Michigan man. So the captain of the team, Rutger McGrory, good to see him healthy and playing. Swiss now trying to get back in this one, down 5-1. Puck skitters through the slot. Americans clear it out. Dave, you made a great point about just trying to have maintain good habits, right? Absolutely. It's, it's playing inside the dot lanes. It's, it's not getting overextended. It's, it's making sure your coverage is, is good and your gaps are good. It's making the smart plays at the line. See, there's a tight gap on a puck carrier. So get a puck into a spot where you can retrieve it. On these wide ranks, you can hammer it past the goaltender and not have to stop it. You can create possession on the weak side of the ice. So just the little small things like that, I think, matter big time as you're building towards the big boy games in the metal round. Here's Perot, skips by the defense, then Perot walking in, just misses on the far side. Gabe Perot walking right in. Shot through traffic, stopped by UA. Looked like Gilbert Perot. <laughs> There's Smith spinning back. Goes low to high. America's on the attack again. Booyah. Behind the net. University of Denver. Standout defender. Perot. Smith spins back. Tries to chip it in front. Knocked away. Julian Rod was able to get it out. But the Americans regain possession and they try to get on the attack again. Get a whistle and an offside. Long change this pair. Long benches there, Dave. Those benches extend all the way into the D zone deep. Oh, they, they do. I mean, it's, 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 you got to be careful on your changes like that one right there to make sure you change and you stay onside. Throw with a great chance. He comes through here, makes a little bit of a move and drives it in. You know, Brett Larson said to me this morning that he was incredibly impressed with how competitive Perot was on every puck. This is some of these guys I haven't seen as much as others. Perot I'm getting to know a little bit. I was incredibly impressed. Every puck battle, a little sandpaper in his game to win battles. If it wasn't for the stick of Timo Bunsley, that might have been a, a highlight real goal right there. Here come the Americans again. Hayes chips it ahead. Chance there. Shot over the net by Quinn Finley. Behind the goal line now, Hayes tries to throw it in front, kicks around into center where Lane Hudson will spin back. Keep this in mind, the Swiss yesterday dominated even strength possession and outshot the slow box. I mean, they had the puck all game. Here's a chance in front. Great opportunity there by Raber. So, so they have demonstrated that they can create offense. They have demonstrated they can play with possession. They have run into a buzzsaw here possession-wise with the U.S. But... Mowgli with a shot, gloved down by Fowler. Then they are a team that can do that is Mowgli with, a, with another good opportunity. Nice job here by the U.S. defending. As Danny they track Nelson. back, Danny Nelson, Nelson, University of Notre Dame. I, I will tell you this, you watch Notre Dame players play, and the one thing that has been always sent to me by NHL GMs about Notre Dame's program, those guys come out knowing how to play defense. It's a two-way game. Got to play the whole rink. There's Snuggler to get a chance in front, and now knocked out of the zone. Jimmy Snuggler, every time he's got the puck, there's a potential for another goal. I mean, that's the story today. U.S. leading 5-1. Snuggler with three goals. He's got four in the tournament. There's a shot just goes wide on the short side. He's feeling it. Yeah, you know, it's interesting with goal scorers. They get one, and all of a sudden, they feel like they can get five. Casey shot through traffic, knocked down by UA. Swiss will play it out. Pass ahead. Here's a chance from Grady. He fires. Stopped by Fowler, and he holds on. He was able to keep it out with the body and then put the glove on it to stop play. Wide open, two U.S. defenders on one player. 
Now, the Swiss player Grading is coming out on his off wing. So he needed a little bit of a second to get himself set up. If he gets that puck off quicker, it's a one-on goal with a player going to the net for a rebound, and he's got a much better chance. He said he took the puck into the middle, but he actually took it in to the coverage. And Fowler still has to make a good save. But wide open, blown coverage. It's something just to keep an eye on. And he had to avoid the jumping screen of Timo Yeni as well. Nice save by Fowler. Swiss looks to get it out. Puck comes through. Brindley is back. Fires it up the ice, and the Americans are on the move again. Down the wall, spinning back. Nazar, backhand pass! Oh, what a play! Nazar to Brindley! Wow! Gavin's dad, you gotta be a little more excited than that. That was a heck of a play. 6-1. This is unbelievable. That's a great zone entry. Watch this pass. Just watch. <laughs> That's unbelievable. I mean, just, just enjoy it, folks. Nazer, head up, and a tremendous reception and delivery by Bridley. No dusting, no anything. He pulls the puck literally off his blade and pops it through the wicket. That is a wonderful, wonderful skill display by those two guys. Both from the University of Michigan. So Brindley with his third goal of the tournament, first today. He had two against Norway, here's a turnover. Throw is almost on top of that, now he regains the puck. Gets it in front, chance by Smith. Stopped by Uwe, and then here come the Swiss the other way. Reinhardt had it, he lost it. They battle behind the net, Chesley is there. Puck comes up the sidewall. Swiss trying to get to an offensive set here. Throw it across. Nice stop. Oh, what a chance. Terranio had a great opportunity. Here's another shot stopped by Fowler. Probably Fowler's best save of the game. I'll tell you what, the only guy involved in the U.S. program that would love to see some defensive breakdowns is Fowler. <laughs> Here's another opportunity in front. It was Hudson, the puck kicks around. He gets on it. Lane Hudson now, throws it across. Will Smith, back to Hudson. Moving in. High slot a shot. Over to wide on the blocker side by Chesley. Moore, Oliver Moore, he just loses it off his stick at the blue line. Team USA looking to get right back on the attack and they do. Hudson with a shot, and now the puck ends up in the pads of Uwe, and he will take a quick break. Gavin Brindley with a terrific goal, his third of the tournament. The Americans are rolling. Are your headlights cloudy and oxidized, making your car look bad? Are they underperforming when you need them most? Cerakote's Headlight Restoration Kit restores weathered headlights back to like new and keeps them that way for life. Stop wasting your time with solutions that don't last. Cerakote's kit includes everything you need to go from this to this. Simply wipe away oxidation, give them a light sanding, and apply the ceramic coating. That's it. The true ceramic technology does the rest. Buy any of Cerakote's number one selling ceramic products for under $20 at these leading retailers today. Let's take a look at the Group B standings. You can see Slovakia 2-0. A couple of good wins for Slovakia. They beat Czechia and Switzerland. Team USA playing their second game today. Look well on their way to a second win. Tough turnaround tomorrow. Czechia, 11 o'clock a.m. Eastern time. We'll have it for you. And then Sunday morning, the 31st of December, you got to get up awfully early, but it'll be worth it. Team USA and Slovakia, probably, Dave, Good chance that one is for the right to finish first in the pool and maybe set yourself up on a better path 
to winning a gold medal. Which normally is the case, but with the Finns being 0-2 right now, that creates a very interesting dynamic <laughs> on the other side. Now, the Finns, I don't care if they're 0-2, 0-3, it doesn't matter. They're still the Finns, and they can still play well, yeah. and they've still got talent. So the Finns get it together just to the point where they get their win to get them into the medal round and finish fourth. I mean, you could be looking at a first-round matchup against them. And in recent years, U.S. Finland on January 2nd hasn't gone as well as many had hoped. Very strange tournament for the Finns, who were usually a force. Losing their first two. Lost to Germany yesterday, the first time they had ever lost to Germany in this tournament. Exciting moment for all those young Germans. Thrilled to get that victory. Here's a chance in front by Hayes, deflected over the net. Looks like UA got a piece of that one. I think the U.S. has done an excellent job at using the whip of the rink to create space in the coverage and then get guys in the soft zones for those quick one-timers that you've been seeing. I mean, that, that to me has been one of the big strengths of this team is the wide drive and pucks in the middle of the ice for great A's. Zell knocking down the Swedish player Wagner in front. Americans come the other way. Over the line. Snuggler with a shot. Nice stop by UA. Snuggler looking for maybe a fourth goal on the day. He's already got three. Nice spin play there by Buyam. Zev Buyam holding on. He's got a goal today. Gauthier in the corner. Gauthier with three assists on the day. Right side, shot over the net. Casey ripping that one. Gets another chance, another shot. Blockered out into the slot. Swiss looks to come away with it. Nice pass ahead. Yeni's shot deflected wide. Yeni loses that one, and now it's Cutter Gauthier the other way. Gauthier looking. He's got Snuggerud again with a chance. Stop Snuggerud with another chance at the net. Knocked down. The Swiss coming the other way, two on two. Pass behind. Shield had that chance. Number nine in red couldn't do anything with it. Long pass ahead. Trying to chase it down there is Isaac Howard. Puck comes out of the zone. Swiss now. We're playing a little fire engine hockey here. And finally we get a whistle. They were using all 200 by 100 in these last couple of minutes, Dave. <laughs> yeah. They certainly were in the Swiss. We'll get nailed with a penalty here. And slashing. Slashing the penalty for Jonas Tybell. U.S. a chance to get back on the power play. Swift with a good attack of the line. And there's the penalty. The top of your screen. And the U.S. power play, which really established itself in game one and had some good opportunities early on in this game on, an op on a power play chance, will continue to move along in that process. Second power play of the game for Team USA. All six goals, even strength. Five in the first period, and then Brinkley scored here, or Brindley scored here in period number two. I love watching the cheating on the faceoff. Look at the speech of the U.S. player. Look at him trying to get him, trying to get that right foot inside the the L's there to get a little bit more leverage. Then a good job on the faceoff by Grading of Switzerland to beat him. Swiss trying to clear, can't do it. Americans keep it in. Brindley, they're going to get to their set. Down along the goal line, walking in front, Leonard, and he scores! Ryan Leonard just walked into the crease and banged it past UA. That's the extra point, 7-1. Good setup, Leonard is the slot presence guy. He moves into the jam play role here. And that's what he does. He just jams it. I'm going to give you a blast from the past. He looks like Steve Larmer doing this. Remember the old Chicago Blackhawk, New York Rangers? Steve Larmer was so good on the power play at getting to that area and then jamming it to the front of the net. Now, if you're not our age, you're never going to remember that name. But boy, was he ever good at it. Same kind of idea. And if you're the bumper, if you're the low slot guy in front and you see the puck coming to your side, you can get out along the goal line just to be a low option. Good, because you take the pass, you're on your offside, you can either move it back, you can move it to the point, 
or you can turn and jam, which is what Leonard does. So Leonard, he had eight shots on goal in their first game against Norway, was not rewarded, but gets one here on the power play. And the Americans lead it 7-1. I know you remember Steve Weimer. I do very well. And you know who else remembers him? Steve Conroy, who is our intermission analyst. So uh, played with him, knows him well. Here's a chance in front, stopped by Fowler, and kicks around. But the puck comes the other way. Gridley, indirect off the wall. Nazar, through. Oh, another opportunity. Friendly again from Nazar. And it's 8 1. And there are the proud parents. Gavin Friendly, another two goal game. And Nazar, just with a. I mean, that is just. That's the familiarity, right, Dave, that this team brings to the tournament. And this is such a key component. The coaching staff has talked about it a lot, too. Let's get guys together who play together. Now, Nazar and Howard wound up playing together at the National Team Development Program together almost by accident. They were out there on a four-on-four -four together, and they scored. They stayed together forever after that. Nazar and Brindley obviously played together at the University of Michigan, and you see some good smiles on the bench. Brindley played as youth hockey with the Florida Alliance. Casey and Fowler part of that group too, and Bridley's dad was the coach. William skipping through, now spins back, spinning the other way, moving to the net, throws it in front. UA wisely will put a glove on it and get a break. There he is, Gavin Bridley. Two goals in the first game, two more today. Team USA dominating. That outdoor game, January 1, is going to be unreal. Both of these teams represent the new breed of the National Hockey League. Playing hockey outside is one of the best things. It should be an awesome experience for us. It's the biggest stage of the regular season, and NHL Network will bring you comprehensive coverage of this amazing event from Seattle. I know I'm looking forward to it. The Discover NHL Winter Classic coverage begins Saturday on NHL Network. You need arch support, but orthotics make your shoes too tight. Now there's CopperFit Arch Relief Plus, the adjustable compression band with a built-in orthotic arch support that form fits to your foot so you can comfortably wear them in any shoe, even barefoot, for all-day support and relief exactly where you need it whenever you want it. Dress shoes, tennis shoes, loafer sandals, doesn't matter what you're wearing. This fits your foot, your foot fits your shoes. That's it. CopperFit Arch Relief Plus, available at these fine stores. Hey, hockey fans, if you know kids who haven't played hockey and would like to give it a try, USA Hockey's Try Hockey for Free Day is set for Saturday, February the 24th. To find a rink hosting a Try Hockey for Free event as the play continues right around the net, visit tryhockeyforfree.com. And keep checking on that because they're always adding rinks. The Americans keep this assault going. On this Thursday morning, Thursday evening in Sweden. William down the wall. Rolls it behind the net. Puck lost there, and this whistle come the other way. Shot wide of the net. Gabe. The Americans play tomorrow, second of a back-to-back -back against Czechia. So as we wind out here, again, things to look for to maybe make that a little bit easier for everybody. I would say if you're the U.S. right now, you've got this game in a situation where you can just keep rolling. You can roll all four lines, get your 13th forward involved, which David Carl said he wanted to do, even going back to game one. You can play 7-D. Cole Camp didn't play a ton in period number one. You can give him some more ice. There he there is right is. there from Brainerd, Minnesota. And just keep it rolling. But again, play smart, play effective, play north. That's the game plan right now. Dionisio with a long pass to Gregory Weber. He has the only goal for the Swiss. There's a chance in front for McGrory. Stopped by UA. It's going to be offside. Well, 
We've seen a couple of the Michigan guys do some good things here in this game. McGrory is another one that is continuing to go to the net and play strong. Nice little chip pass in here. Sweet sauce and McGrory with a good opportunity in front. I mentioned Eric Polkamp a moment ago from Bemidji State University. Really unique to see Polkamp advance through. First player from Bemidji State to play for Team USA in the World Juniors. And I know Tom Saratori in the crowd up there, very proud of him. Here's a turnover and a chance at the net. Stopped by Fowler. Gives a look and says, hey, no problem, I got gotcha. you. Polkamp's had a couple of brothers that have come through too as well. Both played at Bowling Green and all alums of the Minnesota Hockey Caps. There's a little bit of a fumble and a nice stop by Fowler up top. The one thing about both of these U.S. goalies, they catch the puck extremely well. I think it's a huge advantage moving forward, cutting down the amount of work that the Ds have to do to clear out a lot of the spare change. Meyer, Endo Meyer, the puck. Throws it back to the point, chipped ahead. Swiss worked the puck down the wall behind the net. Fortescue pushes it ahead. Swiss holding on again. Low to high. Cross, one tie by Moogley, way wide. Fortescue battling in the corner. He moves it ahead. Perot moving in. Gabe Perot throws it across. Trying to connect with Leonard. Swiss get it out. Puck a little too far for Meyer. Here comes Smith now. Howard tries to throw it through. Didn't get there. Goes up high to Hudson. Little jitterbug action up high by Lane Hudson. So much fun to watch. Throws it through traffic, knocked down in front. I always say Lane Hudson reminds me, it would be Patrick Kane if he played defense. That's a good one. Yep. He takes a, takes a head there behind the net. You gotta watch out for the goal line. Sometimes right it just comes up and bites you. Come and bite you. No! Cross corner dump. Brindley in on it. Pass in front, nobody home. Whistle regroup, flip it out high, but quickly the Americans turn it. U.S. threw a, through five periods here, been really good reloading. Brindley with a pass to Nazar, trying to return the favor. Nazar just fires just wide. Howard, Hudson, back to Howard. Walking behind the net. Isaac Howard coming out in front, looking. Goes to throw it, loses track of it, goes to the neutral zone. Fights hard to kind of allow for some time for his teammates to get back, and here come the Americans again. Chance for Howard, he drills one just wide. Another good pass by Nazar. It's Howard with a shot, and he scores! Isaac Howard rips one. And Team USA with a nice goal. And they lead it 9-1. Howard lost the puck up high a moment before this happened. Tracked back to get it, got the play restarted. And now sees his hard work rewarded as he finds the net. Quick little sneaky shot, gets it lined up. And he goes over the shoulder of QA, but I, to me, the play before this, where he took the puck up high along the blue line, lost it, tracked back, helped regain possession and get the puck moving north again and then stayed with it, is good. And that proves, you know, goes to my point of the reloading component. Yep. The U.S. has been really, really good where if they don't get the puck on the initial battle, they get back up above it so they can reattack with layers. And that is an important part. Shell walking in, he fires one just wide. So that goal for Howard, that came on a delayed penalty. Fowler had gotten off, they had an extra attacker on the ice, but penalty gets washed out by the goal by Howard. Team USA rolling today. What's it gonna be? All right.
right, 60 seconds to draw the perfect gift. What's it gonna be? A bottle of Don Julio 1942 delivered. Delivered with Drizzly. Gifting without the guessing. Drizzly. What's it gonna be? Anyone who's ever sold a home will tell you it's really hard. And it's one of the biggest financial decisions you'll ever make. That's why who you work with matters. Together with Homelight, we take care of every detail, from staging to showing to negotiating to closing. We've helped thousands of people sell faster and for a better price. I'm at the football game. What? I'm at the grocery store. What? I'm at the combination football game and grocery store. Wait, he's at the football game what? and the grocery store? You don't have to choose between football and the grocery store. All for the Swiss. They know they need a win to avoid the relegation round, and their opportunity will be more than likely against the Norwegians as you see the smiling and happy faces on the Team USA benches. They have got it rolling right now. The Swiss will, will play Norway and play Czechia to finish out preliminary round play. I think with a day off, I assume that they're going to be more formidable against Czechia. And then obviously Norway is a team that they're going to have to beat to stay out of relegation. Absolutely. Or the relegation yep, game. It's a one game relegation this year. And Norway worked hard to get back in, so I think that will, they're not going to be an easy out. I kind of always liked that best of three in the relegation. Well, kind of add a little drama it, to it. It allows for having a bad game. Yep. But Team USA doesn't have to worry about any of that. They are comfortably in front here today, and we're only not even through period number two. I'll tell you what, I do miss the days where it was only the top three teams in each pool crossed over instead of four. I thought that made the pool play a little bit more intriguing. But then again, if you get two extra teams into the medal round for extra viewings by the NHL scouts, that's never a bad thing. Gives more teams an opportunity to. If this tournament, the format has changed, as you know, quite a bit over the years. Here's Rutger McGrady with a shot. He rips it over the crossbar. They've had a lot of different looks, different schedules of days where you have a day off here, day off there. Another chance in front by Snuggaroo. I'll tell you a good day off story when we get a whistle here. 2010. At 9-1, you might not need a whistle. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good point. Puck goes through to Ford Skews. There's a shot. Knocked down in front. Cole Camp firing that one from the point. Ordescu chases back. Native of Pearl River, New York. There's a penalty now. This one's going to be on Team USA. Switzerland carrying it over to the blue line. Wagner chasing in the corner. Snuggerud is there. Pass goes through. It's going to come out of the zone. Reber chases back. Goaltender out for the Swiss. Delayed penalty call. Trying to gain the zone. Here comes Meyer. Endo Meyer. Goes low to high. Swiss. Go across. Down low. Working with the extra man. With the... Delayed penalty. Behind the net. We battle along the walls. Haven't gotten a whistle yet. And now we will. It's a long stretch of time. That's, that's never. The they didn't get much done. They no. had the puck, but they didn't really get it to that. A credit to the U.S. defending in that circumstance. And now the U.S. will be shorthanded for the first time in the USA game they one killed one three of three in game number one in seven minutes and 45 seconds because a little bit of a five on three allowed 
Seven shots on goal. A little bit of a high hit by Snuggerud there. They had to fish him off the bench. The play had gone on for such a long time, but he's in the box. The Swiss will get their first power play opportunity of this one. 0 for 5 yesterday against Slovakia. They get to their set. Swiss had 19 attempts to the net on their power play yesterday. Seven on goal, 12 missed or blocked. Weber tries to throw it through. Good stick there by Nelson. Weber again. From low to high. Dionisio shot. Kicked out by Fowler. Fowler's rebounds have been great today. I mean, everything has been off to the side of the net for him. He's, hold, he's held on to him. Dionisio shot stopped by Fowler. Rebound tempt around the net. Swiss couldn't get it through. They keep possession, though. Weber gets it back, fakes the shot, leaves it for Dionisio. Tuck a little too far for Weber. Ty Bell to Weber. Walking in. Puck went to the net, steered aside by Fowler. Dionisio up high. Shot through traffic, deflected wide. 48 seconds left on the power play chance. 25 seconds left in the period. Dionisio. Weber. Dionisio across. Chance. Short side. American defense is lost. And you can see one guy, one of the Americans racing to the bench. Here's Dionisio on the rush. 10 seconds left in the period. Weber spinning back. He's got the only goal for the Swiss. Dionisio. Four seconds left. Shot to the front of the net. Deflected to the corner. And that will do it for period number two. So another big period for the Americans. Rolling along right now with a big lead. Gavin Brindley with a pair of goals. They lead it nine to one. Let's get it to our intermission host, Keith Arizari and Steve Conroy. Thanks a lot, guys. And we are in our second intermission report. And Connie, you, you look at this second period and you wondered, well, would Jimmy Snuggerud continue to dominate? He had the hat trick in the opening period. This was the Gavin Brindley period. Yeah, Gavin Brindley, who's 5'9", 165 pounds. I, I talked to his coach about a month ago, Brandon Arado, head coach at University of Michigan, does a fantastic job there. He says he plays six inches taller, 100 pounds heavier than he is. He's 5'9", 165. So, yeah, he's got a nose for the net, too. His dad, uh, a hot hockey player way back in the day. Grew up in Florida, believe it or not, but uh, still a fantastic hockey player. 6'4", 250 would be some <laughs> heck of a player. All right, let's get to the highlights now from the second period. And I guess we buried the lead here because it was 5-1, five, five minutes into the second period, and Gavin Brindley would come through, and that is a rip. Yeah, well, let's give a lot of credit to Denazer. He's got his head up the whole way. The cutback, the backhand pass, which is hard because he threads it through about three red legs. Brindley, very little time on his stick, beats the netminder. So 6-1 is your score, and now just about maybe three and a half, three minutes, 45 seconds later, it's Ryan Leonard on the power play. Might remember that name because his brother John played in San Jose and the National Predators. Gets a little lucky here. Tries to stuff it, ends up going off of Moogley's stick, the defender. Watch from this angle. The nice move, but then the defender actually pokes it in himself. He'll take it. So 5'9", 170 is what we list Brindley at, right? And you mentioned he goes to Michigan. Well, the world wanted to see more Brindley, and there it is. Mm -hmm. He goes to Michigan. He also goes to the net really well. And uh, excellent shooter. You know, sometimes it's hard to take a pup across your body. The one-timer is a little easier when you're open to it, but you got to take it across your body, settle it, and then get it off your stick in a hurry. He does exactly that. That made it 8-1. But then I heard people were saying there's just too much Wolverine talk. How about Sparty and Isaac Howard from Michigan State? Yeah, he's a player, and I like the fact that he kind of picks his spot. He gets the shot there, gets denied, but he stays with it. And watch him pick up the puck, realize he's got a little bit of room, time and space. He takes advantage of it. And Face off is 4 o'clock, and tickets are on sale now by visiting the USAHockeyArena.com or in person at the box office. Don't miss this unique chance to see the future stars of the NHL January the 15th at USA Hockey Arena in Plymouth. We will have that game for you right here on the NHL Network. And so, Dave, I hope that uh, you're as, uh, someone who 
keeps a close eye on all the top prospects all the time. I'm hoping you'll be in attendance for that one. That's always a great event. Love that rink. And Scott Monahan and his crew do a wonderful job making sure that that stays a first class facility. No commitment, though, from you. I, here's Being my. There in, in, lot, in person. Maybe join us on the broadcast. Keep selling me. Okay. All right. I'll work on it. It's actually a really, it is a fun event, and I love going, and it's a great chance that people in the area get a chance to check it out. Here's Denise, Denise Hill's shot. Stopped, and now we get a little challenge in front. How could you be that angry that quickly? You've just been sitting down for 15 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. But the Swiss with a good opportunity here, and like I said, it's a good thing for the U.S. to get a little PK practice under live fire. Great grab by Fowler. The, the one thing in talking with Mike Ayers, his goalie coach at Boston College, Fowler is talking about, or Ayers is talking about Fowler, and he said 20 to 25 feet out, his hands are amazing at how many pucks they either catch or knock away. Just really quick hands, and they're set up very well in a stance. So Team USA kills off the power play. Snuggerwood back on the ice. Third period just underway. E.J. Raddick and Dave Starman. Oh! Thanks so much, everybody, for tuning in today on this Thursday during the holiday season. We know you got a lot of things going on, so we appreciate you taking the time to check in with us. And a dominant performance by Team USA. And it's just been uh, right from the get-go. I mean, right from the start of this game, two early goals, they just have dominated action. Yeah, you can make the case that this game was over in warm-ups as the U.S. just came out of the gate and they were absolutely flying, but that was the message that a lot of the U.S. players talked about. They didn't like a lot of yesterday's game. They didn't like a lot of components. And one of the things they wanted to do was clean their game up and be effective on shift-by-shift -shift basis. Snuggaroo. Got three in this game, four in the tournament. 13 points in the tournament last year for Jimmy Snuggerud, so really enjoys this time of year. There's a chance and a goal! Christy is able to regroup the puck and beat Fowler. And the Swiss with their second goal of the, of the evening, and it's 9-2. This time the Swiss gained the line with a little space that they can maneuver around it. And on the weak side of the ice, wide open and Fowler. We were just talking about his hands. This one handcuffed him a little bit. Christie on his off wing, using the defenseman as a screen. And that is an NHL quality shot. Quick release up top. Most shooters, or I should say all shooters know that a good chunk of the goaltenders on shots from underneath the top of the circles are going to default and go down. And as they're going down, you put it upstairs, and he caught him short side in a really hard place to get your catch club. Nice piece of offense. So for Christie, that's his first goal in the tournament. First goal in, in any World Junior. It's first World Junior tournament for him. Played in the U18s back in 2022. So uh, it's on the board, and it's 9-2. Team USA back to the attack. Puck loose in front. Taken out of harm's way. Now, if you're the U.S., now you got a little bit of a rally cry because you always want to win every period you play. So now you're down 1 nothing in a period. You turn the period into a mini game. And your goal is to win these 20 minutes. So it gives you a little jam. Chance at the net by Bogner. Now it goes all the way back down. The Swiss will regroup. Dionisio. Long pass. Stolen. Danny Nelson on the four check. There's a little bump to Dionisio. The puck comes up out of play. U.S. with a game tomorrow against Czechia, and they'll have a chance to go 3-0 and as you get another look at the Swiss goal here. Christie wide open. That's just a great shot. Use the knee as a screen. Put it upstairs short side. Because sometimes when you're off wing, your eyes see the short side. The puck sees the far side. There's one through traffic, the point. And that was just a really good piece of shooting to tuck it in short side. Hayes now. Drops it off, but nobody was home. Covered by Fullerman. 
behind the net to Mugli. Up the ice they come, but the Americans were able to break up that chance, and they'll start back. Swiss now with the puck. Grading fires it behind the net. Hayes is there, chips it to the middle of the ice. There's Nelson. Tries to go around the defender. Can't do it. Gradick with it. Taking a look. Pass across. Bounces up in the air. There's Brindley. He jumps on it. Drops it. Nazar to the net. Puck just skidded off his stick as he went through the crease. Frank Nazar, you now he turns it over. Swiss try to come the other way. Good hustle back, though, by Isaac Howard. Swiss gained control. Dionisio with a shot. Fired wide. Brindley with the puck in his skates. Booyah. And now it's Nazar. He's with Brindley. Brindley going to the net. Nazar to Brindley. Shot stopped by UA. Another great chance. Brindley going for the hat trick. But UA denies him with a terrific stop. Tybell now, 10 and red, goes back up high. Shot through traffic. Kick to the corner. Brindley tries to get it out. Dionisio keeps it in. Dionisio with the puck. Throws one blocked in front. And then the puck goes up and out of play. Great stop here by UA on the hat trick chance by Brindley. Another good play by Nazar with a little sweet little pass, and it's UA with a real good scramble across. Brindley is in a little tight here to the point where he can't get the puck as high as he wants to, and real nice job with the glove by UA as he comes across. Lane Hudson wires it off the wall. Team USA on the move again. Gauthier. Buck kicks into the high slot, turned over, McGrory there, couldn't handle it. Here comes Mueller, Miles Mueller. Goes it behind the net. Mueller plays in the Quebec League for Moncton. 14 goals, 29 points in 30 games, having a pretty good season there. Now it's Gauthier on the backhand, driving to the front of the net, Snuggerud with it. Another chance for a snug route stopped. We're going to get a penalty. The Americans with another good opportunity in the net. The Swiss with another penalty. I remember talking with Dane Jackson, the associate coach, University of North Dakota, a couple years back. We were talking about penalties, and he said, somebody in analytics had said to him, every time you take a penalty, it decreases your chance to win a game by 3%. Now, the Swiss are not going to win this game no matter what, but I always thought that was an interesting note. Switzerland number 18, minor penalty for checking to the head. And it just shows how important it is to play these games five on five. Julian Rod was the one who is in the box. You can see Rutger McGrory kind of shaking that one off. Quinn Finley was laughing on the bench there. I guess you could laugh when it's 9-2. Have a little fun, Dave. Well, this game's about fun, right? Well, it better be when it's 9-2 if you're on the right end of it, because you don't get those that often. There's Brindley now walking in, looking for the hat trick. Goes back up high to Casey. Same as Casey, up to Brindley. They exchange. Brindley looking down low, try to force it through. Could do it. Brindley gets it again. Perot. Puck goes along the wall. And the Swiss get it out. Puck goes ahead. For Brady, he's going to battle in the corner there with Casey, try to kill off some clock. Coming up on. Minute left on this power play chance. Swiss are able to find that loose puck and just chip it down. 
The reason you want your power play to be good every time it steps on the ice is this is the type of tournament where your power play is a major factor, especially as you go deeper and deeper into this tournament. Five on five scoring gets harder as teams get pre-scouted. Intensity gets a little bit better. And your power play can make a huge difference. So regardless whether it's 3-2 or 9-2, power play opportunities are being sharp on it are a major point of emphasis with every coaching staff hoping to win a gold medal in this tournament. Benley gets it now. Gets it back, takes a look, tries to throw it through, couldn't connect with Hay, or Polkamp, excuse me. Polkamp shot, knocked down. Final seconds of the power play. One-time opportunity by Finley, and he's able to get it short side. 10-2. Finley, one of two New York Islanders draft picks on this team from the University of Wisconsin. And he didn't have a whole lot of room to operate with here. U.S. gets another pass across the Royal Road and one on one timer from underneath the circles. Great pass by Nazar, and that was a seeing eye puck. Finley just bombed it, and it found daylight. Really nice work on the opposite side. And every coach who's ever coached this game has had that look and that feel at least once or twice in their career, and it's not a good one. So Finley gets the goal. David Carl, the head coach, with a power play with a big lead, gives the third unit an opportunity, and they convert. And Frank Nazar, I mean, he is the past master general in this game. I mean, he has been slicing and dicing, and he set up Brindley for a couple. He set up now Finley for that one. Just a terrific display of uh, playmaking by Nazar. Chicago Blackhawk pick. He might have a kid named Bedard to set up one of these days <laughs> in the future. He set up Quinley, Quinn Finley for that one. The Americans with the big lead. NetCredit is here to say yes to a personal loan or line of credit, even when other lenders won't. Apply online in minutes and get funds deposited the next business day or sooner. Go to netcredit.com. NetCredit, credit to the people. If your employer doesn't supply health care coverage and you don't qualify for Medicare or Medicaid, you need to give us a call right now. Private health care is private health insurance for ages 65 and under with no deductible. To get the coverage you need, call the number on the screen now. Here's a look at the leading goal scores for the first five plus periods of these 2024 World Junior Championship. And you can see Brindley and Snuggaroot leading the way. Here's the thing, don't leave. That could change <laughs> in a minute. You're yeah. in the graphics department, don't get up. Yeah, you're be, you've been busy today. <laughs> 10 goals, here's another chance as Hayes just chips that over the crossbar. Everybody trying to get on the act. Jesse will chase back behind his own net. Hayes, a nice player. 6-2. Third round pick of Chicago. Plays with a lot of jam in his game. Howard loses the puck. Swiss are able just to clear it down. It's going to roll all the way down, and we get an icing. So I owed you a day off story. All right, what do you got? In 2010, between Game 3 and Game 4, leading into that Canada game New Year's Eve, Derek Stepan was the captain of that team, and Step went to Dean Blaze, the head coach, and said, we, we shouldn't practice today. Our guys are exhausted. Now, for Dean, that was kind of like, oh, are you kidding? So Dean said, okay, I'll give you the day off, but you guys better show up against the Canadians. They obviously did and played well. They lost that game in a shootout before winning the gold medal a couple days later, but just 
One of those examples of coaches trusting in their players in their leadership group and allowing the leadership group to know the pulse of the team. Meanwhile, the Americans have about five chances. <laughs> but when you're up 10 to 2, there's a little less urgency from, from the booth. Now, three days after that day off, this same Swiss group, led by Nino Niederreiter, overcame a 1 0 lead in a semifinal game on January 2nd to the Russians and won the game 2 1 in overtime to pull off one of the biggest upsets in the medal round of the World Juniors. Nito Niederreiter, of course, got onto a long and successful career in the NHL. A number of Swiss players playing very well. Roman Yossi, Nico Heischer. Here's a two-on-one the other way for the Swiss. Shot stopped by Fowler. Nice pass save there. A great track back. Rebound in front, and this time, Shields makes good on it. He had the first chance, Fowler stopped him, but Theory Shield is able to get that loose puck in front and get goal number three for the Swiss. 10-3. Look at the back check. Look at the great play by Finley to come back, and then it got a little loose in front of the net. Finley made an awesome play in a 9-2 game to track back like that. I mean, that's the mark of a true pro. And then off a secondary opportunity on a shot that came a little bit through a screen. Real good positioning in front of the net as the Swiss on Shield's goal take a 2-0 lead in this period, or a 2-1 lead in this period. Shield did a, a nice job there. He kind of gave, it's like the NHL move, right? That little shove to yep. the defenseman, throwing him off balance. That's why Lane Hudson was off balance. And then the puck kind of came off the pad right to him, and he was able to put it in. You know what was great at that, that little shove in front was Claude Lemieux. A lot of guys were good at it. He would certainly come to mind. There's a big hit there by Cole Camp as Wooler tried to skip through. And it's something that you can teach your players to do. It's on the borderline of legal, illegal, depending on how you do it. But the push off to buy some space and then to get open either for a rebound or a quick pass is part of the little things component. Yep. That as coaches, we like to teach our players to do it. It's just one of those just small little nuances. Trying to create a little room for Absolutely. In Get a your stick area. open. Yep. You just got to be real careful on your push. So the U.S. with 10 minutes left here in the third period, up by seven. It's safe to say they will continue their world junior dominance over the Swiss. Came into this one 23 0 and 2. A couple of ties back in. In 93, 1-1, one, one. and in 2005, 2-2, two, two. but that was it for the Swiss. And on, oddly enough, on this day, 46 years ago, it was the first time they ever met at World Junior Play, and it was a similar story because the U.S. won that one 11-1. So uh, the Swiss will have to wait another, have to wait at least a while before uh, they can get off the schneid, so to speak, against the U.S. at this tournament. Do the math for me, 46 years ago was which tournament now? I believe it was 78. That might have been, that might have been Louis Vero behind the bench <laughs> on that team. I'll double check that and I get a sec. Three of the last six games between these two teams have been one goal games. They played in the quarters and January 2nd, here's another opportunity for the Americans. January 2nd, 2017, that, you were on the scene for that one. That game was a 22 winner. Yeah. That, that game, I'll never forget Bob Mott's goal. Now the coach of the University of Minnesota. They won the gold medal that year. And I remember Bob saying to me, you have no idea how much bile was in my stomach prior to that game. Just knowing we were the heavy favorites and they were playing with nothing to lose. Yeah. Was that a Nico Heischer team? That shot fire. That right. I believe was, but I, mean, I can't remember where I put my keys an hour ago. <laughs> There's Ty Bell on the rush. Turns and fires the puck deflected wide. High slot. Ty Bell with a shot misses the mark. Just a little less than eight minutes left in regulation. Team USA. 
the comfortable lead here. Chance that end by Howard. We'll be right back at it tomorrow, 11 a.m. Eastern time. Czechia will be the opponent for Team USA. For now, it's the Swiss, and the Americans have a big lead. What's it gonna be? All right, Tandy. What's it gonna be? The drink made from whatever was laying around? Or the one made with your drizzly haul? Drizzly! Stock up today, sip well tomorrow. Drizzly. What's it gonna be? This holiday season, give your family the gift that keeps on going. <laughs> Energizer Ultimate Lithium. <laughs> the number one longest lasting AA battery. Are you drowning in IRS tax debt? Get ready for a toll free hotline. Take advantage of new IRS tax forgiveness programs. Call Civic Tax Relief for free information now. Find out about the Fresh Start program that is now available through Civic Tax Relief. Civic Tax Relief's special tax hotline can help you discover all the relief programs you qualify for free. Just call 800 223 5906. 800 223 5906. 800 223 5906. The broadcast of this game is authorized by USA Hockey. Any rebroadcast, retransmission, or other use of any image, sound, account, or description of this game without written, express written consent of USA Hockey and the International Ice Hockey Federation is strictly prohibited. Off the draw. Americans gain possession. Puck comes up high. Hudson. Lane Hudson dancing around, throws it towards the net. The Swiss are able to get it out of harm's way. Oliver Moore, number 11, back there. He tries to throw one in front. There's a nice chance from Howard stop. Hudson dancing up high, behind the net. Throws it again to Howard, who just misses the mark on that shot. Bunsley sent to the head. Mueller, and he goes offside. By the way, I just want to correct myself on something that I think I might have misstated earlier. When analytics will, when it comes to power plays, every time you take a penalty, it decreases your chance of winning a game by 3%. I might have said increases by accident. A buddy of mine just texted me and said, I think you might have misstated. So I just wanted to that clarify that. Up that. A little so bit. Every happens. time you take a penalty, it will decrease your chance of winning a game by 3%. Always like to keep it factually yep. accurate. You know, we talked about Fowler in this game. I mean, it's been a blowout from the start. He's made some nice saves. There's been a little sloppy play in front, as you would expect, as the Americans come up the ice again. Comes to Nazar! And he is stopped by UA. Hard to tell on that play. The puck comes to Nazar. It looked like he was gonna. Oh. It looked like he was gonna bury it, and he just kind of uh, chipped it as the puck was rolling there. That's and where you wanted a. Up. That's kind of where you wanted a wedge, and you yeah. wanted with a five iron. It looked for sure like he was gonna put that away, and then the puck just went out of play. So, face off in the Swiss end. Cutter Gauthier wanted to make a quick point about Fowler because you brought it up. He played well at BC, but he won the, he led Youngstown to the Clark Cup in the USHL, which was an impressive performance. My, my goodness, was he good during that USHL championship run by the Youngstown Phantom last year. He's got a winning pedigree. He has been really good for Boston College so far this season. He's 13-3-1 on a real good team at a good conference. Down the wind, chance in front. Not to the side of the net. Here comes a three on one the other way. Just skips away from Gauthier. A lot of open ice there. Gauthier gets knocked down. A little bit of stick work going on by both teams. Speaking of Gauthier, 19 in white, I get the feeling that over the next five games, the U.S. is more than likely going to play. He is going to get hotter and hotter. He is going to get better and better. And he is going to be a major factor moving forward. I cannot wait till he just breaks out and explodes. 
I think the Swiss can't wait for this game to end. <laughs> Down 10-3. Hey Utica. Hey Utica. Hey Utica. Hey Utica. Come see the best players in the world at the Adirondack Bank Center April 3rd through 14th. Don't miss your chance to see reigning world champion Team USA defend its gold medal against the best teams from around the world. Get your tickets by visiting EmpireStateTix.com or by calling 315-790-9070. The 2024 Women's World Championship. You don't want to miss it. At FanDuel, we speak hockey. That's why we give you more ways to bet on the NHL. Whether you want to bet on a clapper to light the lamp, root for some winger to start racking up apples, or bet that the Tendi puts up the great wall of pillows. This hockey season, FanDuel lets you bet on the boys any way you want. Bet $5 and get a $150 bonus if your team wins. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So Rodwin Dionisio in the box, the Anaheim Ducks draft pick, fifth rounder in 2023, and he's going to get a penalty for this little bump into Cutter Goche. So Team USA on the power play again. Finley to Nazer, throws it across, one timer! Is it? Thought it might be Brindley. But it looks like it's pole cap. And Frank Nazar again. I mean, it's another brilliant pass. And pole cap is the beneficiary. What a shot, too. What a bomb by pole cap from Bemidji State University. And now the CCHA on the board in the tournament with a goal. Pole camp just lasered this one on, and uh, what a pass. And that is the loneliest of lonely feelings as he covers up the camera, make sure nobody can see how disgusting he was. So 11 goals for Team USA. As I mentioned earlier, the teams 46 years ago today, they played their first time ever at the World Juniors. Team USA scored 11 then, scored 11 now. They lead it 11 to three. Five goals in the first period. It was pretty much over at that point. It's gotta be good for everybody to get on the board here as there's a turnover. The Swiss come back the other way, right Dave? I mean, it's, you know, it's nice to get goals. Oh, nice glove stop. We, Cooler we, in the high slot. We kind of call this one the family game because everybody's family gets to enjoy the fact that their kid put up points in a World Junior game, right? It just seems like every year you get one of these big blowouts and everybody gets on the board with a goal here and assist there. And always a story that you could tell down the road. Good stop by Fowler here. And we highlighted his hand speed earlier in the telecast. And one of the strengths of him is how quick he can move his hands. So Team USA now has 15 goals in the tournament thus far. Canada has 15. They beat Latvia 10-0 yesterday, and they opened the tournament with a win over Finland. Here's Snuggerud, throws it to Brennan. And then McGrady in front wraps it around. Referee says no. Well, that didn't miss by much. Snugger, I'll tell you what. As, as this play was coming in the zone, Snugger had a chance to shoot. And he was very unselfish and trying oh. to get the puck to Brindley for the hat trick. And then McGrady misses by an inch. It was a good stop by UA. I thought for sure that was going in. He got over and got the pad on it. And that's the point, though, I mean about goals, right? It's like if McGrady scores there, it's like off his back. He's had, you know, you have a goal now. Right. Here's Brindley. Spins back. Final five minutes. Oh, big hit there. Braden came in heavy. Puck goes to the corner. Simo Meyer spins back. There's a chance by Braden. Stopped by Fowler. Simo Meyer plays it Pendicton in the British Columbia Hockey League. Planning on going to Northern Michigan. Another penalty now upcoming. We got Team USA. It's a hit behind the net. Game has gotten a little chippier in the last 10 minutes. I mean, it's out of hand now. 
And the referee is probably trying to just keep things under control for the last 354. And you know Dave doing this tournament as, you, as many years you have. These are the times you worry. You don't need something silly happening here that costs you a player because we see suspensions that happen in this tournament all the time. No question. Absolutely. Just uh, keep the clock moving and keep that kind of stuff to a minimum as Bouillon gets the gate. Meyer with a really nice play. That's Simo Meyer 27. As you mentioned, playing for Freddie Harbinson and the Penticton Vs. They saw him at the Holinka tournament last year. And Freddie said to me last night, he goes, I knew that Grant Pitoli was moving in on him to get him to Northern Michigan. <laughs> and combined, we got him to Penticton. And he'll go to Northern Michigan after that. So the Swiss now on the power play. Shot by Mueller. Blocked and knocked down the ice. Good chance for the Americans to work on the penalty kill here. Any chance like this is a serious you, time, right, to, to dig in. Absolutely. Any chance you get to work on your special teams under live competition, to me, is a bonus, whether it's 11-3 or 3-3. Miles Muller throws it across through the skates and out of the zone. Weber will chase back. Muller. Let's try to gain the zone, chip right back out. By the way, is it me, or just from a facial perspective, does Zeb Bowie look like Rick talking? <laughs> I'll have to take another look. I mean, just when you get a chance, it, with his helmet on and the, the helmet over the eyebrows, it, it just it almost looks like a twin. Now the head coach of the Vancouver Canucks, Rick Tockett, one of the great players in league history, tough, had offensive ability, a couple of Stanley Cups. Canada Cup. Yeah, he was great. Seven, big Canada part Cup. of that Canada Cup team. Just heard Wayne Gretzky talking about that recently. Mazar again. Just chips it down the ice. UA will play it. <laughs> Leaves it for Mugley. You think about that 87 Canada Cup team and you think to yourself, Rick Tockett made that team, Steve Eiserman didn't. And just the wealth of talent that was, was on that team. It's unbelievable when you look back at that roster. We had Lemieux and Gretzky playing together, so that alone problematic for anyone, anywhere, <laughs> anytime. Here's Team USA shorthanded with a shot. Brindley fires it over the net, looking, still looking for that third goal. Snuggle with the hat trick in this game. Brindley has a pair, and it's Howard, Booyah, Smith, Leonard, oh! Finley, and Polkamp. The 11 goal scorers today. One of my favorite defensemen, by the way, was on that team, Normand Rochefort. Ah, from the Quebec Nordique. He was great in that tournament. Always shows you, can, you need a good, hard, shutdown guy on the back end of your decor. It's a team game. Puck in the slot. Another chance there. Puck just came dangerously loose. But the Swiss could not find a way to bury it. Ninety seconds left now in regulation. It's been all Team USA right from the start. Two goals in the first couple of minutes, five in the first period. And they lead it 11 to 3. Getting ready for Czechia tomorrow, 11 a.m. Right here on the NHL Network. Make sure to tune in. Coming up after this one, Sweden and Germany get together. Germans will see if they can surprise again after shocking the Finns yesterday. Imagine beating the Swedes and the Finns on back-to-back -back days. Might have a national holiday. <laughs> Germany. Germans have produced some really good players. I mean, obviously Leon Dreisaitl, one of the very best in the league. Let's see if they got any gas in the tank after that emotional win over the Finns yesterday. And the host Swedes, they're need the win as they want to keep pace with Canada and try to be the number one seed on in Pool A. Swiss with a little push here late. Spuck behind the net. Bradick. Under 20 seconds now. Throws it back down low. Takes a bump. 10 seconds left. Shot to the net. Stopped by Fowler. And that should just about do it 
in a game that was decided early. And it was decided in large part because of that man, Jimmy Snuggerud. A hat trick in the first period. Will Smith got them on the board. Two goals in the first three minutes and 20 seconds of the game, and Team USA just rolled from there, Dave. Uh, they really did. This was this was a surgical strike, and it, you mentioned started early. They jumped on a goaltender that was shaky. They never took their foot off the gas, and it's the perfect game in pool play when you're playing back to back because it'll be three games in four nights after they play tomorrow. And if you can play back-to-back -back nights, because every team gets a back-to-backer, where the first of the back-to-back -back is you can roll four lines and not get emotionally challenged, perfect. Little representative for the U.S. and the Seattle Kraken. So there we go. Get the flag waving. Day for smiling for Team USA. Terrific performance by the Americans. Pretty much dismantling the Swiss 11-3. We're going to get our players of the game. I gotta Ladies think Snuggle. The player of the game is presented for by Team USA. Ivka, I would have to contribution think so. Contribution of 5,000 Swedish crowns to Ayabaya Cancer. The player of the game in Team Switzerland and the player of the game in Team USA. The prize will be presented by Therese Kanter Dixon, Ika FK. The player of the team Switzerland is number. 22, Gregory Weber. So Gregory Weber, he has the first of the three Swiss goals, and he'll accept the lovely gift. And the best player of Team USA is number 81, Jimmy Snuggerud. No surprise there. Snuggerud with the hat trick in the game, all in the first period. Score Good goals on the tournament. Good prognostication by you. Thank you. You should do this for a living. I don't think that was a tough one. Oh. <laughs> Although, they had a lot of great, great efforts today. I mean, Brindley played great again. Nazar. I mean, he was just slicing and dicing, passing pucks, and setting up plays all over the ice. Snuggerud with the hat Ladies trick, and now and we get the anthem. Please rise if you're able to for the national anthem of USA. <laughs> Always an emotional moment to be standing on that blue line after a win and hearing the national anthem. Team USA, right from the start, they were terrific today. Five first period goals, including a hat trick from Jimmy Snuggerud. They rolled through the game, end up with 11 to get the 11-3 win. They're back in action on Friday morning, 11 a.m. Team Czechia, that should be a battle. For now, we'll get you out to the Swedes and the Germans, two undefeated teams in Pule.